Hi, welcome to the Voice of Apache. My name is Rich Bowen. A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to speak with Rahul Singh at Cassandra Summit, and we talked a little bit about some of the challenges that are currently facing the Cassandra project. Once again, I am at Cassandra Summit and the AI Summit in San Jose, California. I'm speaking with Rahul Singh, who is a longtime member of the Cassandra project. Long time, right? How long have you been involved with the project? Uh, eight, nine years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that, that counts as long time. Yeah, it's 13 years old, so yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not one of the OGs, but I'm, cool. I'm, I'm there. I'm up there. All right. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that the project yeah. is facing. Yeah. So the first thing that we talked about was a challenge getting people to upgrade to new versions. Now, why yeah. is that? Well, it's because the, the system is doing such a good job, <laughs> and which, is, which is the truth, where a lot of people are using Cassandra 2 or 3, and we're at 4 and 5, and there's nothing broken, so why, why should I fix it? Or the team is very content with the protections around and they don't care about potentially you know, security or vulnerability issues in the older versions. They don't do any patches or anything. And it's like that server in the closet that people forget about that used to be the case in an office. There's a server somewhere that's running this. I don't know where it is, but it's, it's running it. And it's stable. That's part of the, it, we're doing such a good job that nobody wants to upgrade. So um, why do you care? Well, what happens is, as, so, so my day job is, I'm a, you know, I'm a consultant, I'm a technical consultant, platform strategy consultant, and we get brought in to fight fires that are basically related to somebody not upgrading, and they're trying to do something new. So it's nothing was broken, but they're trying to do something new. Or they're getting bought out, and they're going through a uh, you know, um, due diligence process and the tech stack is old. So it comes down to, well, if they had just done this, they wouldn't have had to pay anybody to take care of it, you know? And, and it's also because, you know, what the community that's active, the participants that are helping people, we have to manage that knowledge mm -hmm. and keep helping people that are five, six versions behind when we should be really concentrating on making the product better and improving it for the future, you know, applications and future users, current and future users. Um, so, you know, I don't necessarily think it's a, uh, you know, nice to have problems to be solved. I think it could be, uh, in some cases, what happens is that, you know, a system goes down because of a bug that somebody didn't encounter before. And would this happen maybe four years ago with a, with a client where they ran into a bug in Cassandra 2 and it's been solved in three for, mm -hmm. for years. And it was such an untenable problem because it was in a critical, health critical you know, there's business critical, health critical, mission critical it, in a hospital system. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I think the, the, the way to really solve this problem is that we can make better guides. We can have more content out there that basically says to people, it's not that hard. Maybe some tooling to make this easier. Uh, right now, I would say the tooling for upgrades is basically in the, the priesthood of people that are really good and in, inside companies, uh, we have an opportunity to maybe give people the tool and to say, you know what, this looks very difficult. Here's some automation. Here's something you can use to kind of go, go on your own journey. You need help, you can get help from other people. It's just, it's not a you know, fun thing for somebody to do at a job. So well, what's we what's the upgrade process now? Is it just sort of a reinstall and start over? So. That's a good question. So Cassandra is a distributed system. Each computer has a version of the software. Because it's a distributed system and because of the way it works, it's possible to upgrade one node at a time hmm. and not have downtime. What people think is that it's going to be this, it is a big effort, but it does not involve downtime. That's one of the things we've explained to people. There's some interruptions, but it's just a matter of updating the software and it because the developers in the community have written the software in a way that it can read the old data and the new mm -hmm. data. And then we can run these processes to basically upgrade all the nodes to the newest data. The, the challenge with people that are still using three versions behind 
is there's no direct upgrade path. Yeah. So it's a one upgrade to three, then to four, and then to five, um, which is, I think, the dread that people have. So yeah, that, that, that's how you do it. But if it's really old, then it takes more, more time. And I think the risk is that people would say, you know what, this is going to take too much effort. We're just going to, we're going to need another database. <laughs> So we definitely want to guard against that. Yeah. So this feels actually very related to the other challenge that you mentioned, which is yeah. getting new users into the system in the first place. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, how's the community addressing that? <clears throat> so I believe, it, and you know, it, it, it may sound not relevant, but because there are companies like Datastax that have a free get started on mm -hmm. your own, you know, just sign up for it and try it out. The developer experience to start learning how to do Cassandra is a lot easier. And what that means is that somebody can watch a video and go sign up and try it out without having to really know the operational side of things. Okay. Um, unlike a MongoDB or a Postgres database where you run it on your computer and it just magically works and it's going to work exactly the same, you could do that with Cassandra, but because it's a distributed system, you basically need more resources than a normal person would have on their own computer, right? So that's one thing that I believe is super important. The other thing is that Cassandra is a protocol that people have adopted. So it's no longer, you know, just in Cassandra. So mm -hmm. yeah. Cosmos DB uses CQL, right? Uh, Amazon Keyspaces uses CQL. So, so do two clones of Yugabyte and ScyllaDB. Um, so it's, it's a worthy effort for somebody to learn it. And if it's easy for somebody to get started, so I think examples and, and content is great, but how quickly can they follow it? I think the other would be guides or paths that take somebody from zero to hero, if you will. And uh, again, there are good content on different you know, uh, sites out there. Um, you know, I work with Aaron and Eric and Patrick on planetcassandra.org where right now the effort was let's get Q's cases in. Let's yeah. get people inspired to see what's possible with Netflix, you know, Netflix using it, Spotify using it, Walmart using it. If people see that these big companies are using it, they may have a curiosity, mm -hmm. right? So I think there's an inspiration as aspect which it can only be done by seeing somebody else's example. And I think that's a big first step. And I think there's an educational component of Here's how you do it. Here's a path that you can follow. And I think there's some work to be done there. Um, because the documentation is usually, this is how you do this. Yeah. Not a, this is the hero's journey, if you will, from, you know, to be the Yoda for somebody who's the Luke Skywalker, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, you don't need to go wander in the wilderness. You can just come here and, you know, go through this path. And I think that would be helpful. Um, and the tooling. Uh -huh. The more tooling that we use, it makes our life easier to give it back. So. You know, Spotify gave back to the community, Reaper, uh, that TLP maintained, Medusa, which again, you know, Last Pickle was making, uh, which is a, you know, open source backup tool. These things make it easier. But there's this kind of like arc of basics, intermediate level, advanced, before you can even use that stuff that's out there right now. It also sounds like an opportunity for power users to sort of tell their stories and, and their their, uh, their tips. Do you see any of that happening? I believe Cassandra Summit coming back to this format is a great uh, you know, uh, step in the right direction um, because every one of the talks that's around Cassandra probably you know, has uh, a deck. It has some GitHub repository. If we were to go to these speakers and say, is there something that you would love to open source or talk about? Yeah. I think as a follow-up, um, so just bringing people together to think about, hey, this is what the community looks like, you know? Yeah. Um, I think it's great to, to, to start that, uh, you know, journey with that. Do, do you know if the sessions at this event are recorded? They are. They're streamed, that's for sure. Okay. Um, that's what they were before. All right. And I learned a lot when I was getting into it because of Cassandra Summit 2015 or 2016 yeah. videos. This is huge <clears throat> because it's not just the people here that are getting this. Yeah. It's going to go to YouTube for perpetuity. Cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, and I think the uh, the other thing that you know we were talking about earlier is what does the AI, the generative AI stuff, 
uh, mean for Cassandra community. Cassandra is now one of the, you know, in the in the top open source databases. It is a first class citizen now with the vector search that just came out, and it has been a first class distributed database in the world of machine learning, mm -hmm. real time machine learning. So this new for some time, right? For yeah. for a long time, yeah. yeah. And some big players like you know Uber, they do real time machine learning and evaluation. Um, and it just, if you get into it, it just makes sense. Yeah. Um, you know, I gave a talk on modern data platforms and I was explaining, like, Cassandra is one of the few databases where data could be coming in, data could be uh, analyzed and trained on simultaneously, evaluated on simultaneously, served up simultaneously, uh, and synced back to systems simultaneously without it breaking mm -hmm. because it has the ability to just scale horizontally. And with the generative AI, there's different kind of use cases where you know Cassandra really does a good job, and is it, one is in, in retrieval. Um, if somebody's asking a question, LLMs can take that question and make it into a, a Cassandra query and get that data, facts really quickly, and how quickly it responds for users. It's going to be huge, especially if you have a lot a lot of information. Um, the other is, you know, natural language search, so vector search really kind of hits there. But that's not the only thing it can help with. Uh, if something is embedded and vectorized and saved in Cassandra, it can be used for recommendation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, looking at something, it'll show you similar documents. Um, which, by the way, was not a, uh, an easy feat previously. But now, to be able to say, you can do recommendation. You can do uh, similarity, like Amazon does it. You can do it now relatively quickly. Um, that's what LLMs are doing. They're making these things that were so difficult in the traditional machine learning world, and they're making it a lot easier. And I believe that Cassandra community can really tap into that and say, look, we can do it better. Um, at the same time, I think that people that are getting into generative AI, they're getting into LLMs. Um, this is a great opportunity for Cassandra to be relevant for a new generation of developers, a new yeah. type of application developers, which would not have looked at Cassandra before. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think Cassandra has got a bright future. Uh, there's some challenges, uh, and as I said, helping people upgrade, helping people learn new new things, and uh, helping both Cassandra users take advantage of generative AI and generative AI to take advantage of Cassandra. Uh, we've got a lot of a lot of work ahead of us. Well, thanks again for your time. It was good talking with you. Thank you. And I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the event tomorrow.